Hi, welcome to today's lecture on deep learning. As promised, we will start today with our first shallow learning algorithm, namely linear regression. So let's quickly review uh, what linear regression is about. So in regression, uh, which is a supervised in a supervised setting, we are given a data set uh, consisting of n data points uh, that are sort of input-output pairs, where the inputs are typically vectors and the outputs are scalars. So the inputs are vectors uh, of d features, and y is a single continuous uh, univariate. Um, variable, for example, the price of a flat, the insulin level of a patient, or so on. Um, and the goal is to make predictions, to build a model that allows us to say, say something about the output, so the Y star, for an unseen test data point x star. So we basically given a new point x star that we have never seen before and we want to make a prediction on its label. Yeah, And we want to do so by using our training data set. And we said basically that now we can make multiple assumptions, for example assume a parabola. However, um, so if these assumptions are encoded in a model, which depends on some parameters. And as we said, we want to do linear regression today in detail. The model that we will assume is a linear one. So it takes the input variable, multiplies it by a weight for a single input variable, adds a bias term, and that is our predicted y. For example, if we want to predict the um, values of house prices um, based on the um, size of the apartment, we could basically use the size of the apartment as a variable x and the weight would basically say how an increase in one squ square meter would increase the price or the predicted price. Now, more generally, we're not only given a single feature, but a whole feature vector. So basically, our predicted y hat. So we differentiate here between the label, which is y, and the predicted label from model, which is y hat. So the hat always indicates that there is a form of estimate. So this is an estimated label, and not the real one. It's an estimated label from a model, which is the sum over w1 times x1 and so on, plus um, wd times xd plus the bias term. Yeah? So it's a weighted sum of the features. And if we write this whole thing in vector notation, then y equals the dot product of our weights and our features plus the bias. Yeah. And of course, we are not only given a single data point, but a whole data set, our training data set, so which corresponds of n data points. So we can summarize all of these in our design matrix, capital X. So it's a matrix where each row corresponds to a single data point, so the feature vector of a single training data point, and each column corresponds to all the values for a given feature. Yeah. And then we can write our predicted target variable um, or output for the whole training data. So y now is a is a vector that is y hat one through y hat n. Sorry, 
set it like this. Now, the other thing that we discussed is that in order to assess the quality of a model, we need to define an objective function. And we said that we would agree on using a loss function, where a smaller loss would be a better model. And the most prominent loss function for um, regression is the squared loss, where for a given data point, we um, take our weights and our, bi and our bias. So these are the model parameters. And um, we output, so the, the inputs of the loss function are our model parameters and the outputs is the uh, loss. Yeah? So why is, the, why is the input the model parameters? That's because the loss helps us to compare different models and our models are parameterized by these parameters. So by changing the parameters, we basically get, get a different model. We get a different linear model if we change W or B. Yeah? Now, for a single data point, training data point, we compute the difference between the predicted value from our model and the real label. Yeah? And we square that, so it's a squared deviation or the squared um, of the L2 norm. Yeah? And that is then divided by half. And why do we include this one over two? That's because if we take the derivative of that, we will always get a two back and uh, in order to simplify simplify things, this two will then cancel with this one half, and that's why we typically um, add the one half. So what this basically looks at is the difference between our predicted value, which lies on this line, and the real label. Yeah, and then we take this difference, we square it, and uh, evaluate that. Of course, we are not only given a single data point i, but n of them, our whole training data set. So our loss, so this is li, the, the loss for a single individual, it's a, it's a lower case, case l, whereas, a, whereas our loss on the training data set is uppercase l, again, of um, our parameters w and b. And that is equals to the average loss, so 1 over n, the size of our training data set, um, over the individual losses. And writing this out, we get 1 over n, the sum from 1 through n, 1 half times the prediction, W transpose X plus B minus Y, the true label. So this is the prediction. And this is the training label. Hmm. Now, best model parameters that we could get, W star and B star, so the stars are the best ones, are now given by the minimum of this loss function. Yeah? So this is our capital L of W and B. And the minimum of that um, over these parameters here, so um, or the argument, because if we we, we minimize it, it would it, um, if we would just write min of this, it would actually return the loss at this minimum. However, what we're interested in um, is getting the 
parameter. So we write argmin. So it's the the argument over these here that would produce the minimum here. So if the loss looks something like like this, then if this is the minimum, this is what we would return. Yeah, this, this it would be our W star here. Where here we have W and here we have L. Yeah. As our axis. A quick sort of uh, uh, note on notation. Um, we can actually simplify this notation a little bit for the linear model by subsuming the bias into the weights. And we do so by appending a column of ones to our design matrix X. And then basically the bias disappears here from, from the loss. And uh, note that we wrote here um, the loss in terms of the uh, design matrix. So whereas here we had a sum over all the individuals or all the training data points. Now we are uh, taking the dot product over the design matrix for the whole data point. So, um, so with W, which gives us the vector of all the predictions. So this is the vector of all yh, y hat, the predictions. We take the difference of this vector with the vector of all training labels and then we take the dot product of it with itself which is the squared of the L2 norm or the same thing as this sum here where the, the one half has been moved outside. Yeah? And again x is nothing else but um, the matrix where all, each row is the, the features or is all the features of one uh, training data point. Each column is a single feature over all training data points. And we have appended this um, column of ones here. So we are creating a new dummy feature such that we can include B into our weight vector b. So now if we actually compute the sum here over x times w, we get the sum. So, um, so let's say we are only taking a single row. So it's um, x i times w. Um, then what we get back is actually j equals 1 through d x i j times w j plus 1 times b which is the d plus 1. So this is now basically a matrix that is um, that has n rows and d plus 1 co columns. And now that we have written this uh, loss function in a simple way, we will see that for linear regression, because this is a, a sum of squares, and you may recall from um, from high school that we are able to minimize the sum of squares that we can find an analytic solution for this. And that is um, what we will do. So our W star, our optimum for all our weights plus the bias term which is integrated in this vector now because we in introduced this um, column of ones into x is given by um, the, the so-called ordinary least squares estimator or OLS um, 
Um, so this is a term, how this is, uh, this estimator is typically called more in the field of statistics. And this ordinarily squares estimator we can get by computing the gradient of our loss function with respect to w and then setting this gradient to zero. And then we get this expression x transpose x inverse times x transpose y. So quickly how this works. Uh, we first, as we said, we first compute our gradient with respect to w of our loss, which is 1 over 2n um, x w minus y transpose x w minus minus y y which is equal to the gradient of w 1 over 2n again times y transpose y um, plus w transpose x transpose x w minus 2 y transpose x w where because this is a scalar it doesn't matter whether we write um, y transpose x w plus w transpose x transpose y. So these, um, both of these um, are the same scalar, right? And now we go about and um, actually compute this uh, gradient. So this equals to 1 over 2n still. And of course this goes away here. And this one becomes um, two times x w transpose x transpose x um, and this one becomes. Um, minus 2 times x transpose y and this one has to be transposed sorry it's x transpose x w yeah and now we uh, take the whole thing and set it to zero And of course, it has to be the zero vector because the, the whole thing has the shape of w. So zero equals to um, one over n times x transpose x w minus x transpose y which means that x, which is equivalent to x transpose y equals to x transpose x w. And now we can solve for w by left multiplying the whole thing by the inverse of this matrix. So x transpose x inverse x transpose x and we here we get x transpose x inverse x transpose y. This is equal to the same thing. And now this is the identity matrix assuming that x has uh, more columns than rows such that the rank of this whole thing equal to um, the size of x transpose x. So the rank needs to be equal to the number of features um, 
in this case d plus one, where d is the number of features plus of one dummy feature for the biases that we've introduced. And then we get um, w star equals to the OLS. Yeah? which is our solution here, yeah? All right, this uh, was some math, but let's summarize. Now that we have solved our linear regression model, we can actually apply it. So remember, and we want to stress that uh, again, the key ingredients to machine learning models are obviously training data, a loss function, and an optimization algorithm. And in order to train this alg optimization algorithm, we need um, um, obviously <laughs> the loss function, which we already mentioned, but uh, a key ingredient to the whole thing, of course, is also the data, right? Uh, the model, sorry. <laughs> so maybe I'll just repeat the whole slide. So now that we have uh, solved our linear regression model, we can summarize. So the key ingredients again of a machine learning model are data, the training data that we can fit our model on, the loss function, which allows us to evaluate our model and compare different parameter settings, an optimization algorithm, which finds uh, the best parameter in this case, we actually saw that we can find an uh, analytic solution for our linear regression model, the model itself. And we discussed linear regression with a squared loss and found an analytic solution to it, which is called, called the uh, ordinary least squares estimator. Or OLS. Now, of course, we cannot always find an, anal an, analytic, an analytic solution for our um, machine learning models. Um, in fact, if we uh, actually expected an analytic solution we would exclude almost all of deep learning. For that reason, in the next, le next lecture, we will look at a different, simpler algorithm, the gradient descent algorithm, that finds the same solution for a linear regression model, but also works for differentiable models that do not have an analytic solution, such as almost all deep learning models. So with this, a uh, little teaser for next lecture. I want to say goodbye and see you.